Hello, this is Wayne Brisbane. I am talking to you about um, transitioning to TP biopsy from transrectal biopsy. This is something I get asked about quite a bit, and um, I think it's a very interesting um, topic to chat about. So uh, without further ado, um, same disclosures um, haven't changed at all. Uh, this is uh, pretty meticulously documented in a publication we put out, uh, but this is Journal of Video um, Experiments. It's kind of an interesting video journal, but uh, it's a technique paper. Um, so everything I'm talking about today is further detailed in that uh, journal article, should you need more details. Um, so what I'd like to do is just chat about kind of um, the technique uh, for transitioning to trans perineal biopsy. I just, it's one of those things I think you just almost have to do it. Um, there's not uh, a training wheels approach too much. Um, I think you start in the operating room, do about five cases under anesthesia, and then you just kind of launch it in clinic. And, um, and that should work really well. Um, there's a couple of tips and tricks along the way. So here is the setup that I use. Um, it is yellow fins. Um, a surgery bed is very nice, meaning and it doesn't have to be a technical surgical bed, but just having an electronic motor so that it can be moved up and down is very nice. The patients are going to be in lithotomy, so they sit here and then that you're going to want them much higher. Um, so you're going to put them up and then uh, just having that electrical uh, motion is very useful. Um, I use uh, uh, micro ultrasound. Um, that's just something I've been using for a while, uh, but you can do it with a lot of different techniques. Uh, BK is great. Um, I think Coelis uh, has a nice one as well. So this is the kind of um, back table setup that I use. Uh, so I use a betadine prep, um, some rectal lidocaine, um, two syringes. This is a 25 gauge uh, inch and a half needle. This is a, a six inch 20 gauge needle. And then this is a 14 gauge angiocath. This is a uh, needle uh, or a biopsy uh, needle. This I just happen to have the argon one here, but you can use the barred one. This is kind of the standard side cut one. This is um, kind of a coring one. Uh, and then with these little uh, blue towel or blue sponges are nice. And then we're, we've been individu individually bucketing our uh, specimens or putting them in each container. Regarding anesthetic tips, um, I find music is very helpful uh, for the patient just to take their minds off of something. The rectal lidocaine can be useful. Um, the lidocaine plus bicarb, if you mix it uh, not like a 10 to 1, um, takes the sting out of the bicarb and is very nice. And then the nitrous oxide, um, if you can get it, it's great. <laughs> My patients really find it uh, useful. This is the only time I've ever had somebody uh, volunteer for a second biopsy is when there was nitrous oxide involved. So as far as antibiotics, I don't use any. Uh, there's some uh, clinical trials uh, to support that, and um, I think it's a nice thing about transperineal uh, is that you don't have to give antibiotics. It makes it a little bit more convenient, and then you don't have to disrupt the uh, normal GI uh, biome for your patients. Um, there's multiple biopsy needle guides. Um, that I think can be pretty helpful. These are two of the ones that uh, I've tried that I thought were, were decent, um, which is Precision Point and I believe Pivot Pro. Uh, this is made by Civco. This is, uh, I believe, recently acquired, but they're, they're easy both to get. Um, and basically you, you poke these into the skin and then you move the ultrasound around and it keeps the needle uh, in plane. Um, these are the equipment uh, that I have been using. Uh, I can leave that up for a second so you can take a photograph because uh, I put the McKesson number in. So this is the catalog number uh, for all of these different things. But just to run through them pretty quick, um, exact view, obviously that's what I use. So you can use whatever you need. Uh, the probe cover, um, pretty simple stuff. The lidocaine, sodium bicarb to mix them, uh, again, about nine mils of this to one mil of that. Uh, the rectal lidocaine, pretty simple. The biopsy gun, use whatever you want. The 14 gauge angiocath, if you're gonna use an angiocath, 14 gauge is really the best one to use. I really do recommend if you're going to do a freehand technique, the double freehand where your hands are moving independent, this true guide needle or something similar to it. Um, and a metal needle is nice, so it's kind of another uh, needle guide, but it's uncoupled from the ultrasound. Uh, so that's a very, out of all of these things, this is my favorite, uh, my favorite part of it. 
Uh, Aquasonic's just the gel. Uh, the syringe uh, is this, I get a couple syringes that you saw just to mix up the lidocaine and bicarb. Uh, the first one's to do superficial, and then the second one's to do deep. And then a hypodermic needle, uh, the spinal needle, and then the uh, skin prep, those little um, uh, sponges. And uh, the cotton is just to apply the betadine. So hopefully that's helpful as just a list of, of things that I find that you need for a TB biopsy. So let's get into how this is done. Again, I think you should, if I, the way that I did it, and that's the only experience I have, is we did about, um, I think, only three in under anesthesia, and then we just um, just got started. And I told my first patient, you know, this is the first time I'm doing it. Um, are you okay with that? And this particular patient was an ultra marathoner, um, and he routinely would run 100 miles just for fun, I guess, and exercise. And so he had a, an exquisitely high pain tolerance. And he said, you know, my life is pain, do your worst. And uh, he was a great first patient. Um, but I do think that um, I'm going to try and convey to you the things that I've learned along the way. So first, um, I do a double freehand technique. I think this is, um, I think it's a great technique. It does take about five to seven hours to just learn to get the ultrasound coupling uh, to the needle, meaning not couple, physically couple, but to, to kind of align the ultrasound probe with the needle. It just takes about five to seven my, uh, hours of muscle memory. And once you've locked it in, you're done and you don't have to pay for needle guides uh, for the rest of your career. So, but it will be painful for five to seven hours. Um, and you can do that uh, on a simulator, you can do that with a probe, or you can do that just with a couple of uncomfortable patients, but you gotta, you gotta put in the time before you're, you just learn how to find these needles fast. The needles, um, so basically I put a stick uh, puncture local uh, at two and 10 o'clock, and then we'll advance uh, this needle guide in uh, at two and 10 o'clock. So this 10 o'clock one is going to be accessing the right apex, the, or right prostate. And then this uh, two o'clock one is going to be accessing the left prostate. So first, that uh, inch and a half needle goes in, uh, pokes right there, and twelve in uh, stills a wheel. And then that wheel, uh, basically, you go over to the. So basically, first put a wheel right here, and then under the skin, put a wheel right here. Uh, so you only are experiencing one poke for the patients. And then you're going to uh, advance that along the uh, kind of. The superficial tissue. So let me show you this on micro ultrasound. Um, so basically, that first uh, needle comes in and it gets the tissue that's going to be on this side of the screen, kind of probably before this, before Coley's fascia. And then you're going to use that six inch needle, or that's how I do it, uh, and you're going to insert it into this periapical triangle, uh, which is a great place for the anesthesia. Now, a couple of uh, tips and tricks on that. Um, you really don't want that needle to come in and hit this muscle as the first thing. It kind of sends an electrical jolt uh, to, down the patient's uh, phallus, and they don't love it. Um, so they'll, they'll, they'll jump off the table. Not off the table, but they'll, they'll do one of those kind of kicks, and it's really uncomfortable for them. So what you really want to do is come medial to these levator ani muscles right underneath the urethra. And to show you that, I'm going to bring in... A uh, micro ultrasound. So here is kind of the scan going through, and uh, I'm going to show you. So this is the midline, just to give you a couple of uh, bits of um, data. So here is your bladder neck, um, seminal vesicles, ejaculatory ducts, and urethra. And obviously, this is super high resolution, but this will work great regardless of whatever ultrasound you have. And um, so when you are um, first doing these biopsies, obviously you're going to figure out where you're going to do the biopsy. You can do that with fusion, you can do the micro ultrasound identification of the lesions, however you're going to do it regardless. Um, so spend the first part just planning where you're going to go. Are you going to do systematics? How many? Uh, where the systematics going to be relative to your target? After that, you're going to uh, be doing your anesthesia. So the anesthesia, um, as we previously mentioned, it needs to be in that periapical triangle. So here's uh, kind of the periapical triangle. Uh, right here and the way that I think is the best to get this in is let's see if I can pull this in like this this is an actual biopsy but um, so I've already done the anesthesia but you can see here so instead of putting this needle in well, you can see this muscle 
So instead of kind of, there's the muscle going right down there, instead of going straight through the muscle, what I would do is I would come in right here. Actually, right here. So the muscle's not visible. So you come in, you are just lateral to the urethra, but medial to the levator ani. So there's this little window uh, where you can get in to this periapical triangle, but you have not uh, poked the levator ani because they, um, they it hurts, and uh, but you're not directly under the urethra. So someplace right around here. So if you go too far, you can start to see the levator ani coming down, uh, and you can see there's more fluid in here than this other one where I have not put um, anything here. You see these big veins. You also have to be careful not to poke into those veins and instill them with lidocaine. Um, but that's kind of my, my anesthetic tips. Uh, first, wheel at the level of the skin. So let me put this up again. So as we go, step one, wheel at the level of the skin. Step two, underneath the skin, wheel at the contralateral side. Step three is going to be insert the needle uh, into the superficial tissue, um, and that's with the inch and a half needle. So that's down to step three. Then step four, I've got to switch this. Step four is to take the six inch spinal needle and is going to be uh, to go into the periapical triangle, but don't go straight through the muscle, go just lateral to the urethra. So obviously not there, but like right here. So you're not into the levator ani, but you're, uh, that is the most comfortable place. Then, uh, so this is going to be step four, is going to be putting a wheel there, and five is gonna be putting a contralateral wheel. And so then you've, you've basically anesthetized the track and you've anesthetized the prostate. Uh, the apical block works great. Uh, you don't need to do anything else uh, in my experience. So after that, you're going to do these biopsies. And the biopsies, um, again, you're kind of just, you have your plan, and it's going to be uh, just executing it. So here's an example of kind of a posterior. Um, uh, this looks like to be mid-posterior. So there's the urethra. I'm not too far off. And then I'm going back to check uh, where, where I am lateral to the urethra. And then uh, just watching this under... Um, under ultrasound guidance. Um, if you have a needle guide, this will be a, like, it, it always is under guidance. You're kind of pivoting. Um, if you have a double freehand technique, you got to roll the um, ultrasound over to find your needle. Uh, but it's not very technically difficult to do once you have kind of developed the muscle memory to do so. Finally, um, here is the systematic biopsy uh, template uh, that uh, I came up with, uh, adapted from the University of Michigan. Um, so there, but there's a ton of them out there. Uh, this one's a 14 core, there's 12 cores. Um, so you just pick one. Uh, and I think it's very helpful to talk with your pathologist about this beforehand. You have a lot you're trying to focus on. And, um, it took me, you know, I, I was just sending these things to the pathologist, trying to figure out as I was going. And, uh, it, it would have saved me a big headache if I had just planned this with the pathologist beforehand. So, in conclusion, uh, these are my tips for transitioning to transperineal. Uh, I think you do five cases in the OR, and then you just kind of have to launch your in-clinic practice. It's very reasonable to do it in clinic, um, and, but it just takes a little bit of practice getting the, the technique down and getting the muscle memory down. So I think that's reasonable to do in the operating room when your patients are very uh, comfortable. Um, the needle guide to start is very reasonable. Uh, these needle guides that I talked to you about uh, versus uh, the barred uh, one or whatever you want, but this true guide needle is the one that you're seeing here, and I think it's really nice. Um, and then your systematics um, are just talk to your pathologist um, about how you're going to do the systematics as a team and report those out, and then make sure that you understand uh, what they're reporting back to you. So I hope that is helpful. Um, if you should have any need to have a further uh, TP help, I would be more than happy to, to chat with you about it. Um, I think it's a really nice approach for biopsies.